uh, so um, yesterday I put a post on the group just asking just a quick question about how you feel around competition and being copied and uh, a couple of people kind of commented on it and uh, it looks like we've kind of got the same idea but I just thought I'd do just a, a quick live with you just to kind of go over and give a bit more detail and maybe just kind of cover it in you know a, a little bit more in depth hi Claire how are you so years ago when I was younger um if you were being copied by somebody it was a real real kind of tragic event um I remember having a real upset with my mum because somebody had the same pencil case as me and things like that I don't think boys tend to worry so much about it but for girls same haircut, same coat, same pencil case, same school bag, those kind of things were tragic, you know, the real upset. But I think nowadays with Facebook and with Twitter and things like that, you're encouraged to share things. So you're encouraged to copy people, if you like. So if I put a post up um, and I've got a share button so everybody can share it and do the same thing or comment and say stuff. So... It's almost like nowadays it's allowed, it's agreed, and it's something that you should be doing. Now, when you transfer that into the business world, it's whether or not that still kind of stands. So a lady I know has a flower shop, and she has people constantly copying her designs. Now, some people would say you should see that as a compliment, you know, somebody copying your designs, it's a good thing, you know, they love what you're doing so much that they want to do the same. But for her point of view, it stops her being unique. So she's kind of saying, yeah, but I put all this effort into creating a design and making my business unique and being different to everybody else, and then other people copy me. But how can you copyright that? How can you, you know, you can't patent a flower design or something like that. So it's kind of getting that balance right and knowing what's acceptable and what isn't. And I just thought, you know, just a quick discussion around how you can, can deal with that. So if, for me, I'm looking to put together at the moment a boot camp dealing with self-doubt. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing is writing workbooks. So I've got a five-day course coming up and there's going to be a, work day, a workbook even for each of those dates. Now, as soon as I've given those out and I've shared those PDFs with everybody, anybody else that is also coaching can completely steal what I've done and share it for themselves and charge twice as much for what I've done and, you know, earn money from it. Is that fair? You know, how, how do I go about, you know, dealing with that? I can't stop people having it. I can't you know, sort of not let anybody have access to the workbooks because they need them for what they're doing. So sometimes I think in business you need to accept that you're going to be copied. And sometimes you need to accept that things that you do, regardless of how much effort and how much time it takes to kind of create something unique, you are going to have some people out there that are going to copy you and they are going to steal your ideas. So it's whether or not you can accept that. And if you can accept that and take that as a, a compliment, then, hi, Kerry, how are you? Then it's great, because what you need to do is then just change your mindset to it a little bit. So for me, with my workbook, when I start putting it together, I'm putting it together based on the fact that it's going to be copied. And I'm accepting that it's going to be copied. So what I'm saying to people now is, when I share this with you, it's yours keep it do what you like with it copy it share it give it to your man it doesn't matter so and the minute I say it's okay to share it it's okay to copy it it's going to stop me being upset or angry by other people copying it so it it takes away that upset that frustration um stops it being a negative and makes it a positive all of a sudden I'm saying I'm giving you authority I'm saying it's okay and by doing that I can then move forward, I'm not carrying around all this negativity about it, I'm not upset by it, and every time I see somebody share something that I've done, or copy something I've done, I take that as a testimonial, that somebody who thinks that something I've done is so great, that they're going to use it, and it's not a bad thing, you know, why should it be, but if you're 15, and you know, you've just had your hair cut, and you're 
friend down the road copies it, it still seems to be a tragic kind of event. And as grown-ups and as adults, we set that example. So if as parents we're complaining and moaning that somebody's copied our idea, then our children also see that it's a negative and then they start to feel aggrieved, if you like, when somebody copies them at school. So we need to start teaching people that actually it's a good thing being copied and you should encourage it. Ask them to copy you. You know, give them the give them the okay. Say, I'm giving you this, I want you to do the same. Because if you can do that, then you feel better with it. You're able to feel more comfortable around the information that you're sharing. And like for me, with the workbook that I'm creating, the workbook's going to have so much more information in it because I'm not holding anything back. If I tried to sit and write this workbook today and I am i don't want to share this or I don't want to tell people that because it's like a, a trade secret, then my clients are getting less from me than they deserve. And that's not right. That's not fair. So by creating a document that I'm saying, do you know what, I'm happy to share it, I'm happy for it to be out there for everybody, then my clients are getting 100% of me, they're getting absolutely everything that I've got, and there's no holding back, and that's what they deserve, that's what they're paying for, and that's the right way to do it. So my kind of question yesterday was a little bit of a trick question, really, when I was sort of saying, you know, how do you feel about competition and being copied, because, you know, it's, Really, it was a, a more of a sort of tongue-in-cheek, really. I liked the quote that sort of said, you know, your idea to use my idea was a great idea. Now, if you're in an office environment and you're not running your own business, or uh, like I am at the moment with the, the workbooks for the boot camp, so say you're in a, a meeting and you have an idea and you're sitting over lunch and you tell one of the people on your team or somebody in the office, oh, I'm thinking of mentioning this to my manager, and then they go and tell the manager the idea and they get the rewards for it. That's a little bit different because that isn't copying you as a compliment. That's copying you to be deceitful. And that's where you want to get the the line drawn, really. So if, for instance, in my old job that I was doing as a manager, if I'd had a chat with one of the other managers and said, oh, I'm planning to do this with my team as a as an engagement process, but I can't do it till April, and then they did it in the March. And then our managers, when it came to our appraisals, kind of said, well, actually, this person's done really well because they had this fantastic idea of doing this with their team. And you're thinking, well, hang on, that was my idea. You can look really petty if you get angry about it, but actually, it's affecting your um, your work, it's affecting how you're seen at work, it's affecting your, your kind of reputation, because... You, those people are coming across as being a better manager or coming up with better ideas because of things that you've done or things that you wanted to do. So my advice under those circumstances is to just keep your mouth shut, really. And I know that sounds harsh, but, you know, I love Nikki's comment um, on the, the post that said, you know, be kind and be selfish. Absolutely, you know, be nice to people. I would never, ever suggest that you hide things deliberately um, which could cause somebody pain or upset um, but yeah if you've got a great idea be selfish about it keep it to yourself um, and then when you've released it and it come from you then yeah let the world copy you so for instance when I worked at the MIB I was really big on my buffets and my sort of theme days if we were having a buffet at work, mine were always centred around something. We had a beach party um, and things like that. And I I was, I loved that. That was something I really enjoyed doing. I loved the planning of it. But I would very rarely say to anybody else, and I, and I didn't have an issue with the, the other managers, you know, two of them were on this group, so, you know. But no, it, it, it wasn't a problem. But you wouldn't say, oh, I'm planning to do this. You would just do it. And then if other people wanted to do the same thing, that was fine, that was okay, because you've kind of done it first. And the same as when you're coming up with an idea to um, improve something at work, you know, you've got to share it, you've got to be able, I mean, you know, those of you that are in a team, if you're achieving really good figures because you're doing something different to everybody else, you have to share that, you can't keep that to yourself because your clients are suffering, the business is suffering, and that's not right. And there's no point you sitting there saying to people, oh, well, I, I get great scores because 
I do I do things differently. I do it in a different way. I do, you know, certain things on a Monday and certain things on a Friday and things like that. Because if everybody else can do it and everybody else can, you know, achieve a better service and provide a better customer service, then you know those kind of pieces of information should be shared. So it's it's getting that balance right and knowing, you know, when is right, when's not right, and and what's a good thing to do. So. Really, I think it's it's you kind of you've got to know you've got to know your business. So my advice is that when it comes to keeping information to yourself, make sure no one's suffering because of it. There's no point holding information back that means other people mm. are even then getting into trouble or failing because no one likes that kind of person. Um, yes, you want to be seen as being a better than everybody else and that's fine you know you you should be unique and you should stand out amongst your peers but don't do it to the detriment of other people so a couple of tips is love the be kind and be selfish so definitely you know try it out first yourself and then when it's a success and you know it's working then share it with your teammates share it with your peers have the good ideas put the good ideas out there come up with some great ideas to do things differently implement them yourself and then share with other people how you've done it so if you're managing a team of people or you're in an environment where you're a team leader or you're in a a team of people where you have an authority then yeah definitely you know get it out there do it yourself first you know kind of make sure it works as well and then when you start getting the really great rewards for it then share it with other people don't keep it to yourself when you come to run in your own business, then yeah, great, you know, get your boot camps out there, run your workshops, do your theme days, all that kind of stuff. But don't feel aggrieved when people copy your ideas. See it as a compliment, see it as something good. If you've done it first and then they do it after, there is nothing to lose by that. You you know, it's not an issue, it's not a big deal. And I think we we worry too much about what people think and you know we we want to be seen as being the leader in our field. And you can be a leader in your field, but if you're going to lead, you want people that follow. There's no point leading yourself with no one behind you. So the minute you call yourself a leader, you have to assume there are people following you. And the people following you, they're going to copy your ideas. They're going to use the same information that you're using. So go back to my post and a very quick summary. Um, don't be offended by competition. Don't be scared by it and uh, don't worry about people following you. Encourage it. Ask for it, you know. Um, but yeah, if it's something really personal to you, then just make sure you do it first. But don't worry about other people copying you afterwards. Anyway, um, I'm going to get back to writing up my boot camp. I've found this Canva thing that somebody suggested to me. Uh, it came up in a, a group that I was in. And then the lovely Hannah helped me with working out that I could actually use it for um, booklets as well. So I spent all last night and I'm going to spend most of today as well creating my um, self-doubt boot camp, which is going to go live in March, fingers crossed, and uh, really looking forward to it. So thank you ladies for joining me today. Um, I just wanted to jump on quickly, show my face, say hello, show my grey hair, which I've just noticed. And uh, I hope you're having a lovely day. Take care. Bye.